Yeah, this is a rim. And uh, the technique on this one is actually one of the more complicated ones in glass. We did it, we made this piece in the Museum of Glass in Tacoma where we had really, really good help. And so in this case, we had a friend who, one of our friends there who knows how to make raticella, which is a very, um, one of the more complicated uh, Venetian techniques. And, and, it, and what that, it, the reason that there's crisscrossing is that there's a basket blown out of cane, red cane, and you can, they twist it one way. And then on the pipe, you have this very same thing, but still on the pipe, not made a basket yet, going the other way. And you plunge, they're both hot, you plunge one into the other, and there you get the crisscross. And in between, the little red pieces of cane, in between all of them you will see a tiny little bubble that gets caught in there. So we, you know, when we're working it with a crew like that, both this one and that bean pot over there were made at that museum. We had probably between 10 and 12 people working at the same time on the, on the piece. Because the larger they get, the, the problems you get like uh, geometrically much harder to make. Because you, you, you've got to remember you're carrying the, this weight off of a pipe at the end of a stick. So it feels like a lot more because you can't carry that. It's not the same as carrying it like this. You have to leverage it. So, you know, these guys are they're usually pretty big guys that are, that are you know, pop IR. And uh, they, when you have a crew like that, you got to take advantage of it. And so we're lucky that we get to do that. Next summer, we'll probably do it again because we're teaching in Pilchard School of Glass. And usually when you teach there, they have you come in and do a uh, one week residency. And it's it would be a ridiculous amount of money to hire a crew like that. So it's, it's quite a wonderful experience. Again, it's a huge chunk of glass. While, the, while, while we show the guys the drawings, what we want them to be doing, we're making these hearts and we're keeping them in a, in a device known, known as a garage, which is a little kiln, but it has a, a wide open door. That's why they call it a garage. And you can just put these at the end of a pipe and keep them warm and have somebody kind of watching out that they don't slump in there. And then we start, we work with them and when they're ready, the piece that gets blown, we talk about technique, this is a bubble. This used to be on a pipe, closed right here, pipe, with a neck, a neckline in it. And then the rest of the shape is, is, is made. At the bottom, there's a little, a, a big patty put on, all of this yellow. And then there's a big metal rod. It's hollow because it's, it's, it, gets, it gets so heavy. They grab some glass on the end of that, like this much. It's called a punty. That gets stuck at the bottom on a bench. And then they add, add water to this little small neck and then they break it off so it gets, the bubble gets transferred from a pipe to blow into to a rod to hold on to. And then this side gets heated up. When this gets heated up, they use another tool to open it up and they, they add this yellow line. And then we bring these. These guys get broken off their pipes and we have special gloves that won't usually don't burn you. And somebody's torching this where we're gonna stick it and we come over hot and actually sort of place them and they get so, so this this whole thing from here up is one piece of glass it's a mono crystal you want glass to be a mono crystal because otherwise it would be broken into five pieces so all of this is technically the same piece after the piece is done it gets broken off of the punty water gets added to that and make sure that that's cooler than everything else so that these don't break off they grab it with this and if somebody suits up in a fireman suit they grab it with the same gloves and they carry it into a, a device called an, an annealer, which is a big kiln. There it will, uh, something because of the thickness of the pieces, it takes two days to slowly come down 
What you don't want is any part to cool down much quicker than another. So this piece is slowly brought down so that you won't have, if you have parts that are too wildly different, they, it will crack. Obviously you have a piece that's, that's technically not shrinking at the same rate because cooling down is shrinking, just like heating up is expanding. And believe me, when you're doing this, it feels like it's twice as big just because you're, you're handling it and you're exposing the fire. This thing, the glass is um, maybe um, somewhere to the tune of 1800 degrees melted when we're gathering it. So you are gathering, say that was the pool inside of, of the furnace, you're, you're this close to 1800 degrees gra grabbing it on the pipe. So you get, you kind of get used to that shock, you know, you don't, you get, you don't get burned, but it's sure shocking to your skin if you're not used to it.